He did me wrong. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. After I kiss you. Ham, <laughs> 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 he's a Jew and he won't eat the ham. He's a Jew. He's a Jew. <laughs> the auction is closed. Hope you had fun. <laughs> oh, I did. I did. Every season of Survivor is a story. There are main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a compelling story that has you rooting for someone and against someone else with the hope that it all ends in a satisfying conclusion. Each story that we look at together will go through one character's journey from beginning to end, from the time they're introduced until they inevitably get their torch snuffed or win the game. We will look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they were a hero or a villain and whether they were a good or bad strategist. And with that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. For reference, we are only going to be observing what the TV show is showing us and what story is being told through the show. While secret scenes may be included for extra content, no future seasons will be mentioned as they have no effect on the story being told here, except there will be one exception to that rule in this video and I'll tell you when. All character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And with that, 39 days, 16 people, one survivor. Tom Buchanan, a 45-year-old goat farmer, was a castaway on Survivor's third season, Survivor Africa. And wow, we need to establish a few things about this season that shape a lot of the story being told here. Number one is that this was filmed in the summer before 9-11 happened, but aired after it happened. I just wanted to set the stage for the time this is happening because where we are today and where people were back then are in a lot of ways the same, but in many ways different. And this video is focusing on the story being told at that time. So season three of Survivor is taking place in Kenya with 16 players divided into two tribes, Samburu and Baran. Tom is on the Baran tribe where he is introduced to us as a goat farmer from Virginia and right as the players are dropped off they need to grab their supplies and go on a grueling hike to their camp while this is very similar to the Australian Outback in terms of how it's starting the environment is wildly different this place is hot with little shade and animals are just openly roaming around because this is such a harsh place to live the show actually gives them some clean water to get started with and uh yeah, Tom's tribe decides this is too heavy. Let's dump it. We'll just get water when we get there. What a mistake. On top of that, Diane is navigating for them and she straight up sucks at it. I live on a farm and the first sheep jumps in a hole, the rest of them fall. And here we were following this blonde girl zigzagging through the desert saying, I think we're this way. But they do eventually reach their camp, and what do you know? People are feeling dehydrated. Well, if only we had water. Well, 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 a well would be nice, but the watering hole they were banking on, it's not great. In fact, elephants use it to wash themselves, so it really isn't clean. Big Tom, though, is a hard worker, and he knows how to get this watering hole cleaned up. You can lie, I can fall, babe. You can lie, I can fall. We'll go fishing in a hole, honey, baby mine. I know exactly what I'm doing here. Is this man going to be a good strategist? I mean, probably not, but I feel like this classic era of the show thrives on big characters and Tom seems to be all character. We then see Jesse struggling hard along with Diane, and so the tribe cracks open a can of cherries where they take one and pass it down. Ethan says he wants his equal share of cherries, but he saw Clarence take two, and that annoys him to no end. On top of that, this tribe loses immunity, and Diane is in physically bad shape. So Clarence volunteers to watch her while everyone goes to the watering hole, and while they're there, they realize, oh crap, what if Clarence eats into their food supply while they're gone? As it turns out, their fears were not unfounded. So when we got on that tree, I sniffed a little bit more. Through talking to Diane, she admits that she give Clarence some water and they just ate a can of beans. Hey Clarence, Diane talked like you want to eat some while it's gone. If you have, you need to kind of fess up, explain why you thought you should eat a can of food. I got her something to eat her, so we split it while she was gone, just so she could feel better. It ain't no big deal. It's a big deal to me. It's a big deal to me too. And I, I want to make it straight right. Anybody that what eats happened? without the rest of it, it's a big deal. It was a judgment call I made. It was a bad damn judgment. There's eight of us. You guys were gone. It don't matter. We're all making it. You can't make the decision. Tommy, Tommy, Tommy I had to open it for her. 
You don't have to open it to her. Well, then it should, right. She should have eaten You a doctor? Let me see she your license. You ain't thing. no doctor. But did you eat any? Yes. Okay, well, that's that's. You made the call here. for you, bro. You made the call for you, too. Did that in the Army. You made a bad call in the Army, you'd be kicked out of there so Hell, fast. Hell, they'd shoot you. They'd shoot you. You'd be code red. <laughs> I'd shoot ass, you. Man, there, were, there, were only, there were only three. three. I wasn't going to not tell you guys. Here's the can right now. I, uh, I put it up. I tossed it. Today's a hard day for us. We have got to. We have. We have we to. Gotta vote. We have to kick one of us out. Today was not a good day to do this. There is a lot to unpack here. It has been three days struggling to survive with no water, and Clarence did that with the purpose of being sneaky because he hides the can. So being mad is to be expected. I think Lex handles this situation the best while Ethan was at a loss for words, and Tom said exactly how he felt without restraint. Three different approaches to a crappy situation. We then go to tribal council where Tom says, I forgive, but I don't forget. So everyone goes to vote and... Clarence Black, he let the team down. We were looking for somebody who was strong, but yet he is weak. Our tribe would do what it takes to win, but we'll do it with our head eye. First vote. Clarence. Clarence Black. Diane. Two votes Clarence, two votes Diane. Three votes Diane. 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 The tribe has spoken. And that is it for the premiere episode of Africa. Big Tom so far has been the resident redneck goofball of their tribe, and while he seems to be fun-loving, don't make him mad. However, the Baran tribe did resist the urge to vote Clarence off, so let's see if there's any redemption to be had. By the way, did you know this video was selected and created back in June of 2023 at the request of my patrons on Patreon? If you want to pick what I make and watch everything up to six months early, then consider joining them. Links in the description. Episode 2 starts off with Lex explaining that Tom's vote for Clarence was on purpose as a way for the tribe to send him a message, which is why it wasn't a dumb strategic move. Their tribe then loses reward thanks to Kim Johnson slipping. And she says, I am so sorry for blowing it. And Tom says, no worries. I'm just glad you're on her team. But then we see Jesse getting even sicker than before, as now when she tries to drink water, her body is completely rejecting it. And frankly, if she can't turn it around, then they're going to have to vote her off next. Their tribe is in rough shape, and that's when we see a a crucial alliance formed. Tom and I talked this morning. He and I talked about our three-way, you know, agreement. You, him, and me. You, you and Tom are like the three most honest guys. That's, that's, that's who, who I, we think is honest. I don't know. Right. You never know. Well, Tom and I basically promised on our son's names. I mean, that was enough for him and I. But, I mean, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. We're comfortable enough with you, if you want to be part of it, to be making a long-term three-way well, there's no other. There's no other way. I mean, if it's the three of us, then we don't cannibalize each other until it's three. Right. Interesting that we didn't see the Lex Tom conversation, but instead the Lex Ethan talk. Storytelling wise, that has to mean that Ethan must be the crucial piece to these three sticking together. Uh, but we'll see. They then lose immunity, and that has now three losses in a row. Ethan says, I want Clarence gone before any of these girls go. Uh, is Ethan still holding on to a grudge? And Tom says, Clarence is too valuable to our tribe to seriously consider voting him off right now. I would say Ethan is definitely harboring a grudge. But then at tribal council, Tom votes for Clarence yet again to send another message. This feels unnecessary. But Jesse is voted off five to two. Jesse, the tribe has spoken. Back at camp after tribal sees things heating up as there is a lion literally circling their camp while wheezing. So they kind of know exactly where it's at. But that doesn't mean they aren't taking number twos in their pants at the same time. The next morning they walk out and see the paw prints littered all around. They're like, yeah, uh, today we're building up the walls around our camp because all of a sudden the threat is real. And without the show's production there, I bet a lion would have tried to eat them. They then win the reward challenge, which comes with 100 gallons of drinking water, which is huge, by the way, physically and for their morale. But then it's time for immunity and their tribe needs to make the best SOS signal that has ever been seen. So and I'm going to have this feather in my hand and I might. 
We got a black man with white tighties on. Got a big fat man with a flag waving. Got two little skinny men with flags running around. Women in their thong there. We got a young lady shaking bacon up there. So I don't know what else we could do. If that wouldn't stop the plane, I want to talk to the pilot. Okay, after conferring with our Rep 2 pilot and Harold, our drop master, both have decided that because of the use of color and also the terrain, the rod is the winning tribe. We will now drop the crate. The rod has immunity. I think Kim's acrylic paint single-handedly won it for them, but maybe, just maybe, it was the feather in Tom's butt. Episode 4 sees Tom struggling hard to eat the food that Kim makes, so he tries to climb a tree to get some food, which is so dumb. Look at this tree and look at Tom. Thankfully, he stops. But then they try knocking it down with rocks, which takes forever, and then they have to bust it open. And for what? Like a thumbnail's worth of food. What a waste of time. On their trek to the watering hole, they encounter a bull and everyone says, yeah, we have learned pretty quickly that we need to adjust to the animals, not them adjusting to us. So they take the long way around. Thankfully, they win immunity, so they're now even in numbers with Sombaru, and in episode 5, they get a note that says, hey, go ahead and send three people on a quest. Weird, but okay. Tom, Lex, and Kelly Goldsmith volunteer to go, and when they see Jeff... You guys can give me your buffs. Kelly, Lex, Tom, you guys are now members of Sombaru. When Jeff <laughs> say give me your buffs, I almost turned around and bolted. I would have, if he, you know, and ran. It's a long way back to camp, but if he'd give me the option, run all the way back to camp, no water for two days, or give me a buff, I'd still be trying to run. Wow. For the first time in Survivor history, we have a game-changing twist that no one saw coming. I mean, they didn't pack any of their stuff with them, as a tribe swap has never occurred before. This is new. Immediately upon arriving at Sombaru, they realize, Oh, this is the lazy camp, and the people who are still here, they're the laziest ones of the lazy camp. Wow. They don't clean up, they sleep in, and all of the hard workers they did have just swap to the other tribe. These Gen Xers are real slackers. As it turns out, the Sombaru watering hole has not been cleared out at all, so Tom has to do that again, but this time without any of the fun singing. Right away, we get an analysis from Tom where he says, I think Lindsay is the weakest of these three, and their minds are working overtime on who might have pass votes amongst this group in case a tie happens, like what we saw in the merge episode of season two, because whoever has the most pass votes goes in a tie. Lex says maybe it's Brandon, but he isn't sure. But in bigger slash more important news, Lindsay has a tick on her butt and she desperately needs help. I got me a tick on my ass. Lindsay had a tick on her butt. And tell you the truth, when a woman had a trouble on her butt, I told her that was just what I was made for. It was one of the nicest jobs I've had to do here so far. Thank I, you. <laughs> I think it was good for her and good for men life, kind of refreshing reward. As I said in the beginning of this video, these were different times. Thankfully, they win immunity. And in episode six, Lex and Tom are like, what the heck? We've done a five hour fire watch when everyone else watches for maybe an hour, hour and a half at most. It seems content to just sleep and not keep an eye out for the wildlife. So so lazy. Since what I'm about to show you is a secret scene, meaning it was cut from the show for a reason, we see Tom talk to Brandon about whether he was gay or not in a time when this was rare for someone to admit. Well, you'll have to tell me a little bit more about your lifestyle, because I got a lot of questions to ask. About what? Well, uh, are you, uh... About me being gay? Well, are you open? Are you, are you gay? Uh-huh. Okay. I, I will be honest with you. I can't say as I've ever known a gay man. If it did, he was still in the closet. You know what I'm saying? You know saying? that's probably it right there. You most a lot of people know him. They just don't know him. Big T can't get mad about anything he says because he says it with a smile. And I mean, he's very funny. That's his life. And I guess if that's the way you want to live it, have it. But it sure ain't mine. And what's really mom. funny is probably more got more in common with me than you do with them, since I grew up on a farm. And mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. That the... at least we can talk about food and iced tea <laughs> and we... country fried chicken, popcorn, cornbread, and beans. But on to more important strategic questions, as they see Silas of the old Sombaru tribe was voted out in the last episode. Wow, that means the old Baron is now up by one, and if they can get rid of one more Sombaru, oh, the merge is going to be a breeze. They do win reward, and back at camp, Tom, Lex, and Kelly talk and realize that Kim Johnson has been secretly signaling to them uh, an L with her hands, and they kept thinking, is she trying to tell us to throw the challenge? Like, lose the challenge, that's what the L means? And as it turns out, no, she's trying to tell them that Lindsay 
is the one with the pass votes, which by the way, they are correct. That is absolutely the correct assessment. She does have them. This is big if they need to go to tribal council and in ironic fashion, they do lose immunity and why? Lindsay. Lindsay knows this is game over, so she tries to throw a Hail Mary pass. So what if we vote against Brandon? Then what happens? Sounds like a kind of a merger to me. I'm kind of in a no-win situation. I mean, do I go against my personal morals and values and vote against Brandon? Or do I vote with Brandon and Kim and risk being the next one voted out of here? I don't know what I'm going to do, and I don't think I'll know until I get to tribal council. First vote. Big Tom. Lindsay. Big Tom. Lindsay. Tom. Lindsay. That's three votes Lindsay, three votes Tom. We're gonna vote again. First vote. Big Tom. Lindsay. Tom. And we're deadlocked. In the case of a deadlock, we go to votes cast at previous tribal councils. Tom, how many votes have you had cast against you? None that I know of. Lindsay? A couple. Lindsay, the tribe has spoken. Oh my God, I'm so glad Lindsay's gone. Can I just say that again? I am so glad Lindsay is gone. I could not have taken this merge with her whining and crying and bawling and being a baby. Lindsay's gone. And the other two, uh, they're nervous as a whore in church. Brandon is such a faker, but in bigger news, the old Baron is now up six to four, and believe me, those tribal lines are real. Lex says we are guaranteed final four now with Ethan. This will be a cakewalk, which of course means it won't be. And the seeds of that are planted for us as an audience. When Lex makes a spoon that he calls the Uber spoon, it's really like a cringy thing. And Kelly's like, this dude is such a suck up. I don't like him at all. So then everyone sees Jeff and the 10 of you have now merged into one tribe. Woo! If the last two seasons of the show are any indication of what's about to happen, Baron will pagong the old Sombru tribe until only they remain. They might take a shot at Clarence a bit early, a la Jerry being taken out early last season, but we'll see about that. T-Bird ends up beating Clarence in an immunity challenge that lasts over six hours, and the tribe is given food and drink to celebrate the merge. Emphasis on drink because uh, Tom gets a little drunk and he says T-Bird is hot. Well then. Tom then talks to Ethan about who to vote off next, and it seems like it will be an old Sombru member, obviously. Lex then says, mmm, what about Clarence? Wait, what, why, are we serious right now, Clarence? What has Clarence done to them since day three? And yeah, they have the numbers, but voting Clarence off now, it's a little risky, don't you think? You vote him off and then like Kelly or Kim Johnson flips the air side and that's game. A Clarence vote off here is a bad move through and through, but Lex, thinking he is being so noble, tells Clarence man to man, hey, I'm voting you off. Oh my gosh. Tom says I would rather vote off Brandon. You know, the smart decision around here, which is why I think that secret scene we saw earlier was cut from the show proper and at tribal council, I am slapping my forehead. First vote, Clarence, Lex, Lex, it's two votes Lex. Clarence. 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 The tribe has spoken. Dum da dum dum. Dum da dum 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 dum. That was so dumb. One person flips and Baron is screwed. I I don't. This is this is all personal. That vote felt like dumb petty revenge, which is why Survivor is so fascinating. But still, episode nine sees a bigger development take place. You see, Lex got two votes. Sure, one was from Clarence, which he expected, but the other one, he doesn't know who voted for him. And as it turns out, we know T-Bird did it. And she doesn't tell a soul, but Lex is on a warpath, raging mad. He's like, oh, you know who did it? Kelly. And now he wants her gone for stabbing him in the back. Clarence would like to say hello to that, I think, though I guess he was stabbed in the front. Is that better? I guess in Lex's mind it is. Lex then talks to Tom and says he overheard Kelly say the words, free agent. And that means she's flipping. Oh my gosh, are we serious right now? Baron is collapsing under their own stupidity fast. I mean, Lex is going absolutely crazy about this. And Tom says, 
Uh, I don't think Kelly did it, and even if she did, who cares? But he doesn't want to go against his alliance with Ethan Alex, which I get, but this is bad. This is so bad. So we go to Tribal Council where everyone votes, and... First vote. Kelly. Lex. Lex. Two votes, Lex. Lex. It's four votes, Lex. Kelly. Kelly. Four votes, Kelly. Last vote. Kelly. Kelly. The tribe has spoken. Remember when Baran had a six to four lead? Well, now they're tied four to four. Why? Well, the answer I think is simple, personal and emotional issues. How is Tom the most rational of these three? As I said before, it's what makes the show so good, but man, this is bad. Good on Sambaru though to get all tied up again. Back at camp, Ethan and Alex beef over Brandon. Ethan says, Brandon isn't part of our alliance. He's only loyal to you, Lex. And Lex is like, yeah, so I don't see the issue. Everyone then decides to go to the watering hole and all of the men are ready to go, but the women are lagging behind getting ready. Tom and Frank say, whether we're in America or out here in the wilderness, the men are always waiting for the women to get out the door. But in nastier news, Tom has a boil. I have seen all these animals out here in Africa and most of the animals that are fit and strong usually has a horn. So I'm growing a horn to fight off the beast that comes, and mainly it's coming from inside the camp. The women like to, to squeeze and cause pain to men, and that's one way they can get back at you. Some things you want them to touch, they won't. Some things you don't want them to touch, they will. It's a typical beast. How do I say this eloquently? Gross. We then see Frank say he likes Tom. They both have a strong work ethic. And while Frank is quiet, Tom is the fun one. But I think they agree on a lot of things. Tom then attempts to swing Frank to vote out Brandon next, which Frank is all ears about. And Lex, the man who just voted out Kelly, based solely on emotions, led the charge on Clarence's removal as a revenge move from a long past event, says Tom. We shouldn't vote out Brandon based on personal feelings. Bro. Bro, are you for real right now? If I was Tom, that is exactly what I would have said. But Tom is a smarter man than me, apparently, because he doesn't say anything of the sort. Don't want to annoy Lex after all. And Ethan and Tom then talk and say, Lex or no Lex, we need Brandon gone. Ethan then says, I think we can get Frank to turn on Brandon to get further in this game. And Tom says, hey, that's the American way. At Tribal Council, Jeff does his usual poking and prodding to, you know, see how people feel about each other, what are they doing in this game, that kind of stuff. And Tom completely deflects, which he does a lot, by the way, with his humor by saying, I don't have time to think about strategy. I got so much work to do around here. Out here, there's other things to do. And what is there to do out here other than think about the game? <laughs> well, Lord have mercy. I've had to wash these women. I've, had, I've got responsibility. I've got to dance, I've got to sing. We're well, a pretty lively bunch. The ninth person voted out the second member of our jury, Brandon. Brandon, the tribe has spoken. Tom's ability to deflect with humor is legendary, but in bigger news, that was an eight to two vote to get rid of Brandon, which means all of the old Sombrew turned on him because Lex didn't. Amazing work by everyone else to have Brandon and Lex ostracized, but Ethan is baffled and wonders why Lex still voted with Brandon over him and Tom. Was Lex actually more loyal to him all along? Uh, I think the answer is simple, Lex is pandering to the jury. We then see Tom say he doesn't like Lex jeopardizing this good thing they have by siding with Brandon. I mean, Baron is so lucky Sombrew didn't band together and cause another tie there. We then see how Tom has lost about 40 pounds so far based on what everyone can guess on the show, but what makes this sweeter is the timing of the Survivor auction as Tom wins himself a beer, which he dances over, and for the final item of the auction, he did me wrong, I'll kill you, I'll kill you, I'll kill you. After I kiss you. <laughs> ham, he's a Jew and he won't eat the ham. He's a Jew. He's a Jew. The auction is closed. Hope you had fun. <laughs> I did. I did. I did. I mean, at this point, I don't really take offense. I know he's joking. You know, he doesn't really mean it. 
Episode 1, Ethan might have been offended, but by now everyone knows Tom is just a goofball and his humor is all in good fun. Lex says Tom killed it at the auction and that combined with him dominating people in checkers has him realizing Tom's brilliance and how he hides his intelligence behind his silliness. Me and Tommy have kind of like a, almost like a brotherly relationship right now. He makes fun of me because I'm Jewish and I make fun of him because he's fat and he's got a boil on his neck. And there's this like competition, you know, he's going to beat me at checkers. I go back and forth on whether or not I think Tom is for real or some of it's put on because I think he's smarter than he lets on. What do you two think you're doing? You're both going yeah. back to back. Well, the door's this way. Tommy, he plays a good old boy, but I don't think he's as backwoods-ish as he would like to make you think. You know, his whole, you know, I'm a hayseed from Virginia, I'm not that smart. I knew quickly that he was a lot brighter than he let on. And actually, I mean, that endeared me to him and intrigued me all the more. Frankly, this is not a strategy we saw the first two seasons, so Tom is breaking new ground here. But then everyone goes to the watering hole and everyone needs to wash off, you know, men and women. And while sure, Tom does help the men bathe, he enjoys much more helping the women get clean while uh, sneaking a peek. And we are told via Kim Johnson that Tom is harmless and no one cares. No one cares. Oh yeah, I forgot for a second we're even playing Survivor because at Tribal Council, Frank is voted off six to one. Frank, Travis spoke. Episode 12 brings with it videos from home and Tom's wife says since he has been gone, she has had to ride this big horse stud instead. Hello, Lex wins reward and by the way, he has now won three individual challenges, but he takes Tom with him. And I must say, as you watch this, notice how much stuff they get to do on one reward. Just a matter of hours, everything changed. great. There it is. Uh, be sure to get your tip out of it. Uh -huh. Style's the limit. They're crazy in hell. They're ugly. They're ugly as a girl I used to date back home. They sound like me on a good Saturday night when I get home. I've never drank beer with a mustache before. Cool. I've never drunk beer with a hippo before. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the thunder. It's raining all right. There's not been a drop of rain hit my ass in 40 days and 40 nights. I want to get out there and put my ass out in it. <laughs> <laughs> that was almost as high last night. <laughs> yeah, I think you were higher. <laughs> In 30 years, you ever had to crash? The balloons are wonderfully safe. The most dangerous thing about ballooning is actually spilling the champagne when you land. I see two wildebeest just bonging along. I said, Lex, ain't that funny? I said, uh, all them wildebeest we've seen, these two are down here next to the river by themselves. I said, if I was a lion, I said, I'd pick that little one out. It'd be a good meal. I had no longer said that, then all of a sudden, a lion popped up. She's holding his mouth right on top of that wildebeest there. Where there were two wildebeest, there's now one. That yes. is rad. That is rad. That was cool. Could you imagine if the show had this big of a budget today? My word. After that long, multifaceted, epic reward, we go to the immunity challenge where. Go! First blood. Tom with another bust. You hit me, Tom. Tom took out Teresa. Tom, you're, you're going down. Watch how you talk. Ethan takes another hit from Big Tom. Oh, you... <laughs> Boom! Every dog had you today, though. Here we go. Congratulations. Nice work. Last vote. Kim Powers. You need to bring me a torch, Kim. Travis spoken. That last episode has to be the high point of Tom's story, unless he wins, of course. His wife is hilarious, he gets an epic reward, he wins immunity, and knocks off yet another Sombru member. The only one that's left is the one that he called hot earlier. What could go wrong? He goes to the watering hole, and as it turns out, the elephants have laid a fat turd in it. Well, I spoke too soon. But besides that, they already know they're voting T-Bird off next, and Lex says, we are so bored. We've heard everyone's stories. We've spent all this time together. We just need something to do. And that's when a chicken escapes. They catch it, don't get me wrong, uh, but they say we should probably let it loose again. At least that would cost some fun for us, some entertainment value. But what I am more impressed by is that while everyone is running around chasing this chicken, 
Tom's like half asleep laying on the ground and he's the one that catches it. He does work on a farm after all. They then get letters from home, which feels anticlimactic after already having seen their videos in the prior episode, but it's still a touching moment for everyone. Except Tom, whose son sends him a funny letter. But then Lex wins reward, which comes with a nice truck, and jealousy ensues. Tom is over Lex winning everything, and Ethan says Lex is driving him up a wall. Pun intended. Kim then talks to Tom to flip on Lex with her and T-Bird, and this offer holds value. He would easily beat Kim in a final two. And are these two ladies challenge beasts? Nah, I don't think so. I think he could beat them both. However, it seems like Tom only likes to make deals when the cameras are not around. Tommy, on several occasions, has tried to get Lex voted off. He actually told Teresa that Lex should be the next one to go, unbeknownst to Lex or Ethan. And he came to me and said that uh, if I have an opportunity, it would be a good thing to vote off Lex, but he didn't want to know anything about it. Did Tom tell you not to trust me? And she just looked at me and... You know what, like this? Oh, it's just so I don't understand. In telling her that, Tom basically giving her a green light that I was the right person to vote for. And if I think that Tom, if I think that he's in a situation where he's about to screw me over and stab me in the back, I'll cut his throat. Not to spoil too much, as uh, you may be wondering, is the show just intentionally leaving out footage or is Tom only doing this when the cameras are not around to watch him? Well, here's my theory. I think his talk with Lex earlier this season when they made the alliance may not have been on camera. And this seems confirmed when we see Tom play again in the future and he makes villainous deals when no one is around. That is a rare time I'll bring up the future season. I won't do it again in this video, but it is so important in revealing Tom's character in this game. Lex then wins his third immunity challenge and T-Bird throws a Hail Mary pass by confessing to Lex that she voted for him. And, uh, yeah, this doesn't really change anything as she is voted off four to one. Teresa, Trav has spoken. Finale time. It is Tom versus Ethan versus Lex versus Kim Johnson. Who will get to the final two and convince the jury to vote for them? I think Tom has a great chance with his charisma. He just has to get there. The question is, who wants to sit next to him, if anyone? Well, Lex talks to Tom and... Did you tell T-Bird that she couldn't trust me? That I was not to be trusted? Absolutely not. No question. No if, no ask, no ands about it. As far as I know, I'm, I don't think I did. But if I did, Lex has, has been the man to watch. You're going to run in the front of the pack with a white horse. You're going to be shot at. Also, did you ever tell Kim that she should vote for me? That you would never vote for me because we made a pact, but right. that she should vote for me? I told her, yeah, yeah. Why dig up bones? Not digging up bones. This is, this is, these are current events. I, that's kind of like over there at Sam Bruro. You was the first one to say, well, don't vote for me. No, I didn't say that, Tom, at all. Let's, let's, I, I, I don't have to. You're not, you're not going to shake on the fact that you. I don't have to make another alliance. Today is the day we're going to go vote. And I don't want you to feel like it, that you're obligated to me. You know, the handshake's a big deal to him. He's all, I already shook your hand once. I don't need to shake it again. I said, all right. We're taking a gamble bringing Tom in. Yes, we are. Tom does all of his sneaky sneaky when the cameras aren't around. If only he embraced that secretly smart side that people know he has. But with so much downtime, they're like, hey, let's go stand on top of these rocks. Looking epic is all out. And Tom says, I feel lucky to have made it this far in the game. But then Tom loses immunity. Barely. And now it is time to vote. First vote. Tom. Lex. It's two votes, Tom. Big Tom. Big Tom. Good bad you. Thank you. Time spoken. So let's break this down. How is Big Tom as a character? Did you know Tom lost 80 pounds this season? Crazy. This was actually a secret from everyone until the reunion show of season 37 when Jeff Probst just casually drops it during that show. Okay. He's like, this is the record. And to this day, it still hasn't been beaten. And frankly, I don't think it ever will. Tom was a fun loving goofy guy who used humor every step of the way and loved to play dumb, which kept the target off of his back, but at the end caused others to need him to go because he 
was far too likable. Everyone has their flaws, and Tom's, as expressed by the story, was his inability to own his game and try to be sneaky about game moves when he thought no one was looking. Big Tom was great on season three, and frankly, his character was perfect for this season. Out of 18 character moments shown on the show, 15 were heroic and three were villainous, making Big Tom a hero on Survivor Africa. Now, how is Big Tom as a strategist? Let's address the elephant in the room. Lex should have won that last immunity, but the show screwed up on a question that Lex was technically correct about. Had he won Final Four immunity, Tom wouldn't have been voted off, and his odds of reaching Final Two increased greatly, especially since Kim Johnson ends up winning the Final Three immunity, and if she's not there, she can't do that. What did the show do to make up for it? Well, they gave him and Lex $100,000 each, and they invited them both back for All-Stars. I say this because why Tom was voted off was kind of due to an error, basically. He got himself in a strong alliance, navigated uncharted waters over at Sombaru, and even dealt with an alliance member who was going crazy in Lex, and Ethan, who was kind of emotional as well, far more than Tom, in their decision making. It does make you wonder what would have happened if there wasn't an error on the show's part, or if he had sided with Kim and T-Bird, but hey, that's for the Survivor Multiverse. Out of 21 strategic moments shown on the show, 15 were smart and six were dumb, making Big Tom a smart strategist on Survivor Africa. Thank you for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. I'll see you all next time.